Now we understand how robots go through the entire internet and these search engine robots or crawlers will index or save copies of your website back into their databases. Now this is a little bit like a book. Um, you'd have you know millions of words in a book and those those words would be indexed in the back and so if you were looking for a specific topic you could look at the index and it would show you every page number that that um, exists on. So if I type out monkeys here you can see it's gone through the entire book or the internet and it's got page numbers or the first result or second result for where it can find the word monkeys, right? And so we want our web page to take and be listed in as many different indexed words as possible, meaning that if the only word we ever use on our website is monkey, then we're gonna just show up for monkey. But what if somebody was to type out primates, right? Wouldn't it be helpful if our website showed up on here and we got results not only from the monkeys results, but also from the primary, or sorry, the primate results? That would essentially double our amount of traffic um, and there's all kinds of other things. I could do like a mandrill monkeys or something in there and then all of a sudden I show up for all of their stuff too. And so what you want to do is you want to do what's called a keyword optimization and we want our web page to show up in as many relevant areas as possible. Now if I was using the word lampshade and I showed up for lampshade but really my content had to do with monkeys then that probably wouldn't work out and it's not relevant and Google will you know catch on to those kinds of things um, and, and delist you in that that area but if it is relevant then you will rank and you'll get a lot more traffic so today what I'm going to show you right now is how do you go about getting your page listed on more results okay not just results for monkey but for primates or squirrel monkey and velvet monkey and all these different monkeys and topics that we are you know, writing about on our page, okay? So the way we wanna do this is, I've got a document here. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna come up with as many keywords as possible that you can think of that are relevant to the content that you've written, okay? So I could go through and I could say, monkey's a good word, and primate, and um, ape, I know that's not chimp maybe okay so from the top of my head that's all I could come up with so I'm gonna go to monkey I'm gonna do with the um, thesaurus monkeys okay we'll look that up and we'll look for other words so ape baboon chimpanzee gorilla maybe those are words I want maybe they're not um, but I could take all those words and you know take those and I could put those into my list of keywords okay now that's copy and paste as you can clearly see but um, that's one thing to do the next thing you can do is you can go look at some competition so let's go out type out the word monkeys we'll see who the top result is now it's Wikipedia we could use that this live science underneath let's look at that one really fast and another life science and so what I'd want to do here is I'd want to go through and look to see what keywords they might be using that might also be helpful. Now, one way um, we can do that is by using a keyword density tool. All right, I've got a couple of them here. This one by SEO Book, and then this SEO Review Tools. Okay, and this SEO Book allows us to put in a URL. So let's put in that Live Science URL here, and let's see what it comes back with. So this is going to show us how dense um, a certain keyword was used. So you can see monkeys was used. 2.94% of the time, and monkey 1.76, and world, and howler, and live, and down we go. And then we have two word phrases and three word phrases. Now basically, think of it like this. If there were 100 words, 40 of those words would be the word monkey, okay? Um, well, that would actually have a much higher density, but I'm not sure, well, what is it? 810 words, okay? 521 were unique, and of that 521 we saw monkeys use 40 times or monkey 24 times and you can see its density here okay so that's fine and all all I'm showing you here is these are words that you might want to use okay so I would go back into my document and I would find out write out you know monkey or different things that I wanted to do 
Um, there's other tools out there. Um, keyword generators. Um, and there's a lot of these keyword.io. Some of them are better than others. There's one built into Google Ads called the Keyword Planner tool, which is the best, but you have to kind of have some billing information to get into that. If I just type out the word monkey, it's going to go um, and try to determine other combinations or words that might be really good. So monkey wrench, monkey wrench. And so I would look down through this list and I would see if there's any other words that are relevant. Okay. Now, once you have a list of the best keywords you can use, and I'm going to take those out, just, just know that they're there. We want to use those words in different parts of our page. Now, if you were looking at a newspaper um, and the newspaper was called monkey news, wouldn't you expect you know that content to be about monkeys right and so when you look at your URL structure you know you really want to have if you can even a domain name that has you know something that has to do with a monkey you could say monkey world or something and that is a key word that Google will pick up on now it doesn't put as much clout to that as it used to but it still is part of it and, and users will see that as well you could also have a category like food and um, the, the actual file named, um, you know, winter food or something. Oh, I'll spell that right. Something, you know, more specific and Google will pick up on these. And so that's one thing you can do is use lots of keywords inside of your domain name to reference, you know, what, what your site's about. Okay, now next thing we need to do is we have a title tag. And if we go back to this and we look at our code, you can see we have the title tag, the monkey hut. Okay, now when we search for content online, this is again the title that we're using. And this is a really good indicator of what the content's about. If you write an article and you have a big heading or you know, the top, the name of your website or the business name is something to do with monkeys. There's going to be a higher likelihood that people will click on it, as well as it's another indicator back to Google that you have to do, you know, a lot with that topic. So you want to go through and you want to change these words um, to use the words from your document that we just had up here. So an appropriate title might be something like this. Um, monkey, now let's say we were writing about we we're selling monkey food or something, or we have monkeys for sale. Monkeys for sale, we could just say that. Um, we could do like a pipe, you know, healthy, tame uh, primates as pets or something like that. Now, if we look at how Google does this, you can see we only have so much space before we run out. And when they go and they run out, you get these little dot, dot, dots here. And sometimes they're in front, sometimes they're in back. But this is not something that you want. You don't want to have keywords out here that aren't being shown. And so we want to limit that to 584 pixels wide. And typically that ends up being about 50 to 60 characters long or around eight words. Okay, so I could go through and count this all up and see how many characters this is. And I don't want to be going over 60 characters, but I don't really want to say monkeys for sale because there's a bunch of keywords right here I can use that someone might type in. Someone might type in healthy primates or monkey pets or something. And often the plural will also be caught. So monkey and monkeys often will be tagged as the same thing. And so we could probably get by with that. But if I had like monkeys for sale, you know, monkey tame primates as monkey pets or whatever, um, and I had to, you know, make that smaller. Having the word monkeys in there multiple times doesn't really help me a whole lot because it's already going to catch this one and whatever else, you know, healthy monkeys would be caught for that or tame monkeys or pet monkeys or you know, primates for sale would also work. And, and it will grab those keywords out and do, you know, and, and, and put you on those search engine results pages, okay? So we don't want to repeat any of our words because it's just wasted real estate. 
inside of our title tag that it's still going to catch either way. And we don't want to go less than 50 characters because those are potential keywords that we could be using, but we aren't using. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now the next thing we want to do are our meta tags. And our meta tags are a tag that we place in, um, now we've done some meta tags before. We've done this, you know, character set UTF-8. Um, some new ones that you haven't seen before is this meta name equals description and then content equals and then a bunch of words right here. And what this ends up being, and, and this is what it looks like. I wouldn't worry so much about these others. We've talked about this viewport tag. The author just kind of who wrote it and these keywords don't honestly don't really matter anymore. But if we go out and we look at these keywords, this little section of text right here is your meta description. And you can see if my keywords are up here, it will bold them down here. So what happens is the user will see those words bolded and those words used throughout the description and it will entice them to click on your result. Not only that, but it's another indicator back to Google of what your content is about and just a little description of your page. So what we want to do is we want to take you know, a little snippet of code like that. We want to take out this content right here and we want to type in right here, you know, our keywords, okay? But what we want to do with this is we want to write it in a way that it reads well, okay? And takes advantage of all the keywords. So we had that big list of keywords up above that I deleted. We would want to go through that and in very normal English describe what the page is about. And we could say something like um, our, oops, our monkeys, um, or maybe something like we sell um, monkeys as pets. They are a healthy and friendly alternative to other companions or something. I don't know. You'd want to go through and really look at what, you know, and you'd kind of do the same thing we did with titles. We don't want to repeat words unless we have to. And we want to kind of get rid of filler words. You know, if I'm using the word and, use the word, you know, the ampersand. If you have to change I mean, you just want to use as many of those keywords as you can. That's really the point I'm trying to make, okay? Now, a meta description does have a, a length attached to it as well, okay? You want to keep 150 to 160 characters long. You don't want to be going over that or you'll run into problems. Now, <clears throat> again, like we've been talking about, these all are indicators on how, you know, likely that content is related to... Um, the topic, right? The biggest thing that they're going to look at is your content itself. Okay, now if I take our page and I highlight all of the text and I go back to our keyword um, density tool here and I go just plain text, okay, and I paste that all in and submit it, you can see I have 400 in, sorry, 445 words. There's only 65 unique words, which is very low. And I have the word monkey 47 times and the word world 24 and spider 19. So what I'd want to do now is compare this list against my list that I brainstormed that are the most important. If a word is being used a lot like rainforest and it's not really applicable, I really should go back into my content and change it and remove it where it's not needed. If I find that I'm missing a word um, in my probably within my top 10 here, that are not showing up that is in my brainstorm keywords that I want to target, then you're going to need to change your content so that word shows up more. Now, back in the day, what we used to do is we would write, you know, the best monkeys in the monkey world like to monkey around with their monkey friends. And we'd use a word over and over and over. And that was like a huge indicator to these search engines to, you know, that we were 
kind of the authority or the expert of that topic and that word. Well, we call that keyword stuffing today, okay? And you'll actually get flagged for keyword stuffing. So if you're actually getting over or really close to 10% of your content has the word monkey in it, there's a high likelihood you're gonna get flagged for keyword stuffing. So what we recommend is you wanna keep your keyword densities down to about three to 5%, okay? That's the amount that has been determined to show natural English but also a heavy influence of a specific topic um, you know, within your content. So I would, in this case, probably go pull the word monkey out a few times to get that density down to maybe 4%, 5% at most. And then I might use other words, you know, um, like primates or things like that that are also uh, very similar words, um, but will, you know, help me kind of show a more natural, um, you know, keyword density. Now, if you just write out the best content, you're probably going to see that, you know, three to 5% of those keywords. Google is trying to find the best content for its users. And what we're doing here is not exactly white hat SEO. This is probably more gray. It's not total black hat, but if you can write your content and good content, while you're thinking about what keywords you're using, you're going to end up ranking much higher than any of your competitors on those keywords. And so that's what I want you to think about while you're writing your content, okay? Now, article headings are also looked at by search engines. This is, you know, on this page, the word types here is definitely an article heading. I have this in an H1 tag. It is my kind of logo, but it is actually an H1. This is inside of an H1. It might be an H2, I can't remember. But what you want to do is you want to take those article headings and use those keywords that we brainstormed again. So like monkey food, you know, monkey lifestyle, use that word monkey in there. And that's going to help me rank my page much higher. Next on your images. Okay. We have lots of images through here. I need to go through and write alt tags for these. If it's a picture of a mandrel monkey, you should write mandrel monkey sitting, whatever, and describe that. Google will pick up on those images and pick up on those, you know, tags, those alt tags, and it will help you. The last thing we want to look at when we're doing keyword optimization is your anchor links. Okay. Now that's two types of anchor links. First off, it's your outbound anchor links. If I have anchor links in here, and it might be inside of my menu, okay? It might be inside of a, you know, in here I might have the word primate linked. Well, if I'm linking out on a topic to something that says primate and I'm going to someone else, there's a good chance that content has to do with primates and I'm discussing it or something, right? On the flip side, inbound links coming to you from other websites matter and those matter extensively those are very 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 important meaning let's say i had a hundred websites and they all said you know for the monkeys for sale and they linked monkeys for sale and pointed those back to me that's a major indicator to Google that my content has to do with monkeys for sale. And it's one way they can look across the entire internet and it's almost this kind of democratic voting or um, process that the internet can use to identify what content is. And we just do that naturally by writing links and saying, okay, the word primate is gonna link to this page. Well, it's probably gonna have to do with primates. So that's really important. Now, I'll tell you guys, this might be a little boring to some of you, but if you're a business owner and your business relies on traffic or you ever want to drive a lot of traffic back to your website, you've got to nail the stuff down and you've got to um, do appropriate keyword optimization. Now, if you do this, most websites that I've seen just from the first time probably see double, if not triple the amount of traffic that they're getting now. Um, you know, by making these changes. Now, there's a lot of other indicators to Google on, you know, what what is a good website and what's going to be top, um, but, you know, top listing. But you got to remember, if you do not use all those keywords that we kind of showed up here earlier in your listing, you're never going to show up for those, those listings at all. If you're not using them in your content, you're never going to rank for them. Now, you might rank on page eight, 
for some obscure word you put in this list and you built content for it. But that's still better than not showing up at all. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about um, SEO linking and the importance of it. Um, what, I've, what I've heard from Google and different podcasts from, from some of their engineers is there's three main factors that they look at that are the biggest of, of any of the factors that determine where people rank. The first is the keyword optimization. They look at the content and they determine what the content is. And number two is linking. Number three is something called rank brain and we don't have a lot of control over that. It has to do with machine learning um, and some stuff there. But, but this is very important. So we'll end the video here.